Hey everyone, it's Ava, and today I'm at the American Legion for Vista's Big Give, benefiting Make-A-Wish with... Uh, James Kenny, and we're here for on-the-spot interviews. Well, great to meet you, and I just have to say, I love your cousins. I love my cousins, too. <laughs> yeah, for everyone watching, um, actually, his cousin was my PE teacher in middle school. Yes, she's quite a merry, um, amazing Karen Kenny there. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's good. Anybody that has my last name, I'm totally cool with. <laughs> Yes. That's good. So um, you came out um, all the way from Hollywood to come support this event. Well, thank you so much. And you're raffling some stuff off. Can you tell us about that? Uh, I have a unreleased CD that I did a few years back that I have with me. It's all like legitimate packaged up. It's even got plastic on the outside. Look at that. That's crazy. Physical product. And then I have a um, T-shirt as well. It's one that I actually wore on X Factor. Not personally, but it's the same T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. I wore it on uh, on season one, though. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, what was the main difference between season one and then the season you were just featured in? Um, this one was a lot cooler because I got farther. Oh yeah. Yeah, that would really be uh, the main difference. Well, the other thing was is season one was actually really grueling too. Like they didn't really know what they were doing. So basically, every day we'd go to bed at about two o'clock in the morning, and then they'd wake us up at five or six. So it was just madness. Yeah. Yeah. And then they fed us nothing but Subway and Domino's. Well, that's good, though. No, not so much. You feel toxic after about three or four days of oh, that. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. You have to do, like, one of those six-day cleanses or whatever. I just had to not ever eat that again. <laughs> have you eaten it since? I think I had Subway once, and I was like, that was a bad idea. Oh my gosh. And Domino's I still can't go back to. <laughs> Maybe in, like, ten years. Destroyed me for life. Well, I, I still get it every time I can, so. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you were just on X Factor. So uh, tell us about uh, working with Kelly and that whole experience. And then also, if uh, any advice you have for people who want to try out. Um, working with Kelly was amazing. She's one of the most pure, genuine souls I've ever met in my entire life. Um, she really cares about, you know, her contestants and... Um, she was just, she, she made me better, period. So that's, that's great. That's what they're for. Um, and um, let's see, if you want to try out for the show again, if, if there is a season four, which I don't think there's going to be at this point in time, which is a bummer, but if you want to try out for any of these crazy singing shows, just go out and have fun because that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you're uh, enjoying yourself and not thinking about any potential uh, outcome, excuse me. You just, you know, you go for it. Mm -hmm. shoot, shoot for the stars and, and sing your heart out. Exactly, because you can't just be there so thinking, oh, I want to win. Like, be there with the purpose. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. You just, like, I just went out to, I was like, ah, oh, why not? You mm -hmm. know, can't lose. Yeah. It's not going to hurt. Yeah, so exactly. it was it was cool. And I, you know, I had a great time. I wish I would have gotten a little bit farther, of course. But, you know, I'll take what I got. It was, it was a great experience. Well, still, top 16 is, like, out of most like, people can only dream of. Out so. of, like, half a million people that mm -hmm. tried out. Between YouTube and everything, there was a lot of auditions this season. So it was yeah. fun. So, um, speaking of YouTube and everything, how did you market yourself prior to like being on X Factor? What techniques did you use? I honestly didn't. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> After season one, I did one show at the Viper Room, which is uh, I can throw a baseball at from where I live. Oh uh, and then I just didn't do anything for a while. Um, I almost kind of wrapped it up and said, I'm not going to do this at all. And then I had some friends that kept on saying, you know, come record, come record. And mm -hmm. I kept making some music. And... Um, Helped my friend get a spot through a song that we did on a TV show that was cool. And next thing you know, it was like, okay, I'll just try out again. And um, and now I kind of got the bug again. So I'm, you know, recording a lot. Um, I'm doing six songs for an EP that's a covers EP. Then I have another three songs that I want to record on my own with another friend of mine. And then I just got hooked up with a producer that's actually via a producer that I worked with on the show. Oh, wow. Um, this guy, Matt Squire, who's awesome, uh, hooked me up with this guy, Larry Goats, and we're uh, working on some new stuff right now, too. So there should be hopefully like five to seven new songs of my own, plus about six covers within the next, hopefully, six months. That would be cool. Okay, cool. So we'll look out for those on iTunes, of course. Absolutely. And um, you mentioned prior to this interview also that you might have some shows coming up. Um, can you give some information on that? And then, of course, your social media so that we can yeah, keep up. Yeah, um, uh, the show is going to be at the end of February or beginning of March is what I'm aiming for. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in Hollywood. 
Um, I'm going to do kind of like a X Factor kind of reunion and get a bunch of people from season three, uh, possibly some people from season one. We're even working on getting one of the UK judges to come perform, which would be awesome. Um, and um, maybe his sister, who I won't even say her name, but she's awesome as well. Uh, she knows it's a secret, and uh, so that'll be cool. And I'll keep that posted. It'll everything's going to be available on social media. All my handles are the same. Uh, it's I M James Kenny, which is K E N N E Y. You know that because yes. yes, I wrote it on my paper many times. I see. There you go. Um, so yeah, that's uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. And um, I'm not cool enough for Vine just because I don't have one I, either. I can't do it. My mom says I'm oversaturated already with social media, so I can't have any more. I feel the exact same way. It's too much. It's too much. But, uh, yeah, so that'll be there, and it's going to be a heck of a show. Okay, well, I'll definitely try my best to come out and, um, of course, tweet about it. And um, just one more thing. Can you just give a little shout-out to the whole Make-A-Wish Foundation and everything they do? Absolutely. I mean... It- at the end of the day, we all want to achieve our own dreams and like have our wishes come true. And to have a foundation that's actually, you know, making people's wishes come true is is it's it's just fantastic. And I'm glad to be able to support it here today. Yes. Well, we appreciate you coming out and doing your raffle. And yeah, thank you so much for doing the interview with me. Thank you for having me. Anytime. On the spot, y'all. Yes.